we usually work with working titles in the band. You know, we just pick silly things out of there. For, so for the over two years, this song was called Do Me, D-O-O-M-Y. Okay, awesome. So here's the thing. At the beginning of the song, you'll hear some sound effect type of thing. It's actually the recording of Sputnik from space. So we got a little bit of nod to the original spacecraft coming off of Earth. If that was indeed the first spacecraft, that it gets into conspiracy theory, which is a different podcast for a different day. But the fact of the matter is we used the original Sputnik recording from 1953, somewhere around there. And what we mean it to signal in the beginning of the song is this is shiny ship breaking away and heading towards the dark side of the moon. So how does this work as a story if shiny is not seen as a character till later in the musical who is actually singing in this song, right? In this particular part of this narrative, the people singing are, or I should say the unknown entity singing, are the seraphim, which is kind of like a Greek chorus, which if you know anything about theater, and I'm certainly no expert, is kind of like a, kind of a psychological way to sort of portray a consciousness. So you can do the visual in your mind if you know anything about seraphim. They're kind of burning angels. So in my mind, it's always been three the Greek chorus is three. And so they're singing about Shiny as he floats towards the dark side of the moon. And as I alluded to in episode one, I believe, um, he starts to see that there are things on the dark side of the moon that he was told weren't there, that the universe isn't what it was portrayed to be. So he's aware, even though you don't see him, he's aware now in his own inner mind, if you're with Shiny, the character, uh, he's realizing that the universe as presented to him throughout his life is not true. And so as he goes towards his death into the sun, uh, allegorically, because he's not quite there yet, he's floating off into space. He now is fully cognizant of the fact that the world is presented to him throughout his whole life was a lie. Where did the name first appear shiny in Smashing Pumpkins lore? <laughs> Shiny No So Bright Volume 1, which was the record that we did with Rick Rubin, which has a song called Alienation on it, which was one of the original songs that I started writing for this project over four years ago when James first came back to the band. We didn't end up making the musical then, and I chose not to use the song Alienation for this project, but that song was actually written for this musical. And so the reason I call it Shiny and No So Bright Volume 1 is I was already alluding to the character back then. And uh, and so here he is now in full later on. But Shiny as a character actually starts showing up, I think, 2018. Look, we can get into the etymology of why I named zero, zero. That's, I think, pretty obvious, right? You know, uh, less than one is zero. Um, why did I call him glass? That's pretty evident. Transparent and easily breakable and shattered into a million pieces, which circa 1999, I did shatter into a million pieces. So there I am. So why Shiny? Let's just leave that a bit of a mystery for right now, but you can dig around and maybe figure out why he's called Shiny. Shiny has punched in the march of life, his secret code that allows him to break orbit from his eternal exile in space, and now he's floating towards the sun. So we have the Seraphine singing to Shiny as he floats off into space. And what, before I, we play the track, I want to allude to the lyrics a little bit, because we haven't talked about lyrics yet. And obviously in a musical form, the lyrics are super important. In my understanding of the form, and again, I'm no uh, expert, Every line sort of is supposed to move forward the narrative vis-a-vis -vis dialogue. So if you're not talking, in this case, you're singing, it's a form of talking. So the opening line for Shiny's sort of psychological state, meaning people observing him as he floats off into space, they're talking about who Shiny is from a celestial point of view. Now, that could be God, or it can be angels, or it can be aliens, or all of the above. It depends on your particular belief. And again, you can do that research on your own if you want. There's lots there to talk about. I'll be very simple about it. If you read the Bible from the standpoint that they're actually talking about aliens coming down on a pillar of fire as opposed to enlightened beings, which maybe the aliens back then were hundreds of thousands of years ago, the Bible takes on a totally different context. So I'll, I'll let everybody float off into space on that. So here's the opening lyric on, on the song about Shiny, not the love song from June, but the angels or the seraphim singing about Shiny. To dank doom, to dank fire, into the black at heart, anointed ones provided sons who are the last to rule. Trade on receivers, he ain't coming to, for far have I wandered at last into your bug house ruse. So they're singing about Shiny. Shiny has a very important place in the cosmos. Shiny has always felt that he has a particular mission in life that is above just being a musical star, that he has a destiny. Now, June also feels her destiny, but it's very wrapped in with Shiny. Shiny's is more cosmic. 
the angels are singing about Shiny floating off into space towards his doom. And they're saying, this particular being in this particular moment is very important, much more important than anyone ever thought, including Shiny. The point is, Shiny is very important. His destiny is not done. So even though they acknowledge he's floating off into the sun and his destiny seems dark at this particular moment, there is still another card to play in this story. I personally believe, this is my own spiritual belief, and I do personally believe my personal belief. Those are my spiritual beliefs, and I personally believe that, and that is my own personal belief. So even though this is an egoistic story, understand that the nature of it is a, a deeper belief that that it is an affirmation of all life is important. And I think, yes, in this particular story, Shiny has a particular destiny, but that doesn't mean he's anointed like a king or queen. I believe we're all anointed. 